For as long as I can remember, wood has been part of my life. The scent of this rare and special wood was present at home, at the neighbors, and in the mosque. Nothing gives me a feeling of utter nostalgia like the smell of wood. But looking beneath the surface of this incense will take me on a journey both dark and beautiful. The scent of wood is part of life not just in Qatar where I live, but in most of the Arabian Peninsula. More wood is burned here than anywhere else in the world. We call this wood. It's also called agar wood, gaharo in some cultures. It comes mainly from India and Southeast Asia. Smell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, to you it might be weird, but to me it's really good because I'm used to it since I can remember. It's like you dipped the wood in a very nice perfume. Could you describe the smell? Happiness, I guess. It's so deep in my subconscious. When I use it now, it makes me feel better. Everyone has their own associations with Oud. But above all, it's a communal thing, used to welcome guests or share with family and friends. These wooden chips have become incredibly expensive. And each year, the high quality Oud we thought would be there forever when we were growing up becomes harder to find. This is the alley of perfumes in the old souk. Since wood becoming rarer and rarer, I will see now what they have to offer. Gul hada kambudi. Kambudi. Wada kam sa'ar al kilo. Hada kilo miya ushrina. Miya ushrina alf. A hundred and twenty thousand riyas is thirty-four thousand dollars, which per kilo is the current price of gold. Yeah, this is much better. What's amazing about this, it will definitely stay in your clothes for days. However, the price is too much and I can't afford it. Someone who's been selling wood for decades is Mohammed al Dilemi. In this storeroom, he estimates there is about $1.5 million worth of the wood. The, the, the good people who purchase the wood. How come the price trouble every few, every few years? I mean. The demand in the market, in the whole market. People are using it more, even here. So in, the, so in the Gulf country, they use it more now? They use it more. I use it more, but I don't yeah, know. You use it, it more. Yeah. I use it more. Everybody is using this. It was the recent surge in the price of wood that made me sit up and stop taking it for granted. When I looked into it, I found that the tree in the wild is virgin on extinction in many countries. For some years, Joachim Grasfeld of Botanic Garden Conservation International has been working on preserving the trees that produce wood. He takes me to the herbarium in Kew Gardens to show me how wood or agar wood is created. So this is the agar wood tree? Yes, so basically there is two genera which is Aquilaria and Girinops, which are the main uh, uh, groups of plants that produce agar wood. When a tree is wounded uh, and has open bark, whatever. By what? The, it can be insects, it can be maybe a storm, it can be many different things. So then it provides an entry for microorganisms, fungi. The counter reaction of the tree is to produce a resin and it's this resin that then shows in these black spots. The sad truth is that the tree only becomes valuable when it's infected and generating antibodies in the form of agar wood. 
it is quite a rare occurrence naturally sort of one one in ten trees as I said before is sort of usually shows signs of agarwood production while the other plants in the same population may not necessarily have agarwood and that's why it's a very rare uh, very rare resource when, when you are in the, in the field this is very difficult to see whether a tree has produced agarwood or not so that's one of the reasons why they are often indiscriminately felt just to see whether they have it or not and this is one of the reasons why the species have become so uh, threatened these days. The trees have been put on the list of the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, or CITES. In some countries, this has led to a ban on harvesting, and in the rest to needing a CITES certificate for export, proving the wood came from a sustainable source. One of the things I have to find out is whether my wood is harvested sustainably or not but the demand for the wood far outstrips supply. In the last decade, there's been a boom of interest in the West for wood oil. The pure oil, or dehnal wood, can be overpowering to those not used to it. Yet, in small proportions, it's a versatile ingredient, as Western perfumers have been realizing in the last decade. Nearly all the major brands now have an wood-based selection. But in Harold's Salon de Parfum, there is a French company, Henri Jacques, that was working with wood long before it became fashionable. This is one of our most special blends. Mm -hmm. Good to try. It contains the henna wood, patchouli, amber, vanilla. Great. And how much is this one? It's 890 for 15 milliliters. Wow. And the Wood Supreme is our small, special, unique blend that I haven't showed you. It's our little secret. Mm -hmm. And we keep it hidden. Mm -hmm. This is a very beautiful blend that we only show it to the most prestige customers, the connoisseurs who can appreciate this beautiful. And how much does this uh, bottle cost? It is 2,200 for a 50 milliliters bottle. Alam Mahavi hunts out the best wood on the planet. How did you know about wood? Um, I was introduced to wood uh, when my father and my mother were working for King Fahad uh, Ibn Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia. When I was 14 years old, the king uh, gave some as a present to my father for his uh, job. And uh, I kept it preciously. I started to, to burn small piece by small piece. And then, yeah. I was in love with this agar wood. What is your profession these days? My profession? I'm an agar wood seller. And uh, the other part, I work for some uh, special customer, I would say, to look for some very high-grade agar wood. As the sun goes down, Alan shows me some of his wares. I brought you a few, well, just a few sample from different quality different variety. This one is the last piece that I kept from the king. My last piece yeah. from the king. So and you wouldn't burn this one? Uh, no, it's uh, sentimental. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. So this is sinking grade okay. from Indonesia. It is called sinking grade because it sinks in the water because of the oil content. There's a lot of oil on it. So this is supposed to be the best and it's not supposed it's the best grade of agar wood it's smell a bit like um, like grass like mushroom also alan has a different way of burning wood hot it's a mica plate uh, japanese people use it to uh, so the the heat will not be too uh, yeah. too high it it helps to burn yeah. the, the the wood okay. properly and slowly there's more nuances yeah, it smells like grass. You, yeah. I, actually, it's it's really nice. In a week, Alan will be back on the hunt in Southeast Asia. We agree to meet again there, as it is also time for me to pay my first visit to the countries that grow wood and hopefully find a tree in the wild. Bangkok, Thailand. 
Finally, I'm in the region where Oud comes from. For millennia, Oud has spiritual associations for many Asian cultures, where its smoke was said to aid contemplation. It may have first come to the Middle East with Chinese traders, and today, it's the Chinese again who are having the biggest impact on the market. Back in Asia, on his hunt for Kina, Alan tells me about the boom in Chinese sales. When did the Chinese start demanding wood more than the rest of the world? Uh, it started uh, in 2000. Hmm? 2000, yeah, recently, because of uh, the economic. Yeah. Because there's more and more rich Chinese, and it's really fashionable now. They buy all the highest quality. So the price is rising very, very fast, like every year. And it can be like 20% also depending on the quality mm -hmm. or the highest quality. Overexploitation has led to a ban on wild harvesting in Thailand. And across Southeast Asia, there has been a boom in plantations growing cultivated agarwood. Here, aquilaria are induced into generating their precious resin through chemical injections. Witsawa also uses his own concoction on trees owned by farmers he knows. I will show you the tree that already done inoculation. Mm -hmm. I did it, uh, I think, almost two years. This is the hole that uh, I drill with electric driller, and I squeeze the liquid, the inducer, inside the hole, into the hole. But what do you inject it with? What is this? This is the uh, organic liquid anything is food grade. Yeah, but what's in it? Um, I can't tell you everything because it's, it's a secret formula. You can see the ring? Mm -hmm. This ring is antibody to protect itself from the irritation. This is aka wood. Have can you seen this before? No. This is my first oh, time. Only the finished product that you have seen. Yeah. It's yeah, this is how aqua wood form. Uh, it's, it's how the three form aqua wood. It's really tough. Right it's not the same like the healthy side. The healthy side is moister, uh -huh. but this is dry. It's dry and ha harder. Yeah. Why do you tap the tree? I just want to hear the sound. If any branch hollow, yeah. That means it's uh, time to harvest. Yeah, it's ready to harvest. This one is good enough for a, a normal grade, not a super grade. After the agar wood has been harvested, it still needs to be separated from the healthy wood around it. This is like a wood piece. After done after carving. carving. After carving, yeah, right. How much time he needs to uh, carve a piece like this? I think about three pieces per day. Very slow, right? What about the big one? Uh, this he start carving without cutting a piece of wood. Yeah? How did he carve the whole thing? This piece take about two months to be done. We're coming to this temple to see a huge and very old natural wood, uh, natural aga wood tree. How old? Uh, older than 200 years old. And over the years, did anybody try to buy it? Very expensive. Oh, he said Japanese people offering uh, With Sawa tells me later that the offer was $23 million, which might make this the single most expensive tree in the world. With the amounts of money on offer, it is hardly surprising that there is a huge black market for wild wood in Southeast Asia. This area in Bangkok has become known as Soy Arab, or Arab Street. If you want wood, this is where to come. 
in lots of these shops, there are chips openly being sold from Cambodia, Sri Lanka, Burma, all countries where wild harvesting is banned. How does it come here? I thought it's illegal. But nobody wants to tell the truth. When you ask them, they keep telling, oh, oh I make it legally. Uh, but when you ask about the document, they don't have, they don't have anything to show you. Mayan is an Orangazli, one of the indigenous people of Malaysia. Oi, oi. Okay. He makes his living from harvesting what the forest provides. Top of those provisions these days is wood, known here as the hull. And there it is, the first wood tree I've seen growing in the forest. Do you have uh, other tree like this in the forest? Lebih kurang dalam lapan pokok, tapi tidak dekat-dekat, jauh-jauh lah. Do you think the tree still has a future here? Masa depan Malaysia, uh, kalau tidak ada uh, orang Kemboja, Vietnam, Thailand, Filipina mau datang lagi ke Malaysia, mas kalau tidak masuk lagi dalam hutan Malaysia ini, pokok gahayu, kayu gahayu masa depan banyak. Dia pokok besar pun kasih tumbang. Pokok sebesar ini pun dia gali cabut cari. I see. We walked for hours and we didn't see any other tree, either healthy or infected. And eventually we saw only one tree, an infected one. And a local tribe member is harvesting this, this tree slowly and piece by piece. So, to answer my original question, am I part of the problem? Well, yes. I guess anyone using wild wood is some part of the problem. With the pressure put on it by people like me in the Gulf, by Western perfumers, by Chinese buyers and the black market, its survival may be reaching tipping point. The stocks in Malaysia and Indonesia, which are said to still be viable, supply just a fraction of the demand. The only hope I can see is plantations, where the tree can live long enough to produce the kind of resin that competes with that of the wild. But that will take time. Until then, all I know is that I will only buy wood from sustainable sources. And that after this journey, the scent of heaven will never smell the same again. <laughs>